So here's the example we're using. I've just cleaned up the code a bit because they had it doing some analog reading and um, speaker output. So I've just changed it to just have our LED um, just go on for a second and then we'll make it uh, go to sleep for four seconds with the watchdog timer. Uh, we'll get into that a bit later, but let's just have a look here. We've just got the standard include, so we're including the sleep and the watchdog timer, WTDT. Um, these actually set a bit on or off into the actual registers, um, and we've just got our standard pin LED. Um, this actually keeps track of whether we're in the watchdog or whether it's finished, and we've just got the uh, standard uh, setup. And down here we actually have the different sleep modes we can go into. This is for the actual AT Mega 168. Um, and so here are the registers it actually sets. Now we don't actually have to use this in the setup because in this example they also, if we just scroll down to the actual system sleep function, it actually does it here as well. So we can actually remove all of this section here if just oops all of this section if we wanted to but we're actually I'm just gonna leave this on so you just so we can actually get a better understanding of what it's actually doing so let's just say we just want to compile this thing right now as is so we'll actually see that the register for the sleep enable is actually not right so what we do so we actually check the data sheet and let's go ahead and do that and we can actually go to scroll down a bit and go to the register summary and we just got to find one that kind of um, kind of looks similar to it so it's SMCR and it's about sleep so let's check here about what looks like it um, so what you actually find so we go back here and it's actually setting the SE bit so we can actually check our bits here and see which one says SC, so you can actually see it's this one, MCUCR, and that's setting SE. So that's the one we need to rename ours to. So let's go ahead and do that. And we'll just bring it over here. And it's MCUCR. And we'll just paste that in for all of these. Now I'm not going to paste it in to the last one because what you'll find is that we don't actually need to use it. So what we'll do now is actually go over here and we can actually click on page 38. Now it says here it's the MCU control register controls the bits for power management. Okay that's good. So this is we can ignore this first bit let's go to the sleep enable so it actually says here the sleep enable must be uh, must be written logic one when the MCU enters sleep mode okay so it says actually here to avoid the MCU entering sleep mode unless it's the programmers purpose it is recommended to write the sleep enable bit 2-1 just before the execution of the sleep instruction and to clear it immediately after waking up so now if we check our example it actually does this in setup so that's why I would recommend to actually get rid of this section in setup to get rid of this section because you shouldn't actually be um, doing this in the setup so down here is when you actually should be doing it so this is where we're setting the sleep down power mode here's we're setting the sleep enable so we're setting that one bit and once it's gone to the sleep mode we just disable the SE bit here. Okay, so we've got the SE bit, we've put that to one, and now as over here, let's go back up. And so we had SM0, SM1, and SM2. We didn't want to do this one, so we'll just comment that out. And what we'll find out is that we only have two bits, uh, two registers actually, to set in this in the AT Tiny 85 and so for power down mode we set SM1 to 1 and SM2 to 0 and so we can actually kind of decode what this CBI and SBI does so for the AT 
the AT Mega 186, um, 168, sorry, uh, it says SM2 is zero, so already we know CBI means set that bit to zero, and for SM1 it's setting it to one, and for, um, for SM0 it's setting it to zero. So what we've actually got here is, so it says one zero for SM1 and SM0, and that's exactly what it says in the data sheet here for the AT Tiny 85. So we're actually right. So the next thing is the setup watchdog and we're passing the variable 7 so let's see what that actually does. So we're actually setting up the watchdog timer and it seems that 7 uh, makes it wait for 2 seconds. So we want to wait we want it to wait for 8 uh, for 4 seconds. So let's go ahead and change that to an 8. And let's just uh, see what it actually does. So it actually just uh, sets some um, just sets up the registers here this is basically what it looks like it's doing um, and now if we actually compile it, it actually complains about this uh, this particular register because it's actually different between the AT Tiny 85 and AT Mega 168 so let's go back over to our registers and let's see if we can find something that looks similar to it so WD uh, TCSR. So let's have a look and see if we can find anything that looks similar to it. Uh, okay, here we go. We've got something similar. So it's just the C and the S. So let's take a look at that one and see what it actually says. Okay, so it says it's a watchdog timer control register. That seems like that seems like it should be right. So if we actually go over to this to our code, we actually see it's setting. Um, these registers, so WS, WDCR and WDE, and we can actually see it right here, WDCR, WDE. Uh, e. So all we have to do is just change the uh, the S to a C, and that should be that should be all we need to do in this one. And we'll compile that and see what happens. Oops. Actually, I actually meant you're supposed to remove the S, sorry. Okay, it looks like that uh, has done compiling. Okay, so we've corrected this section. Let's go back up here. And so we've done the setup. Let's go to our loop. And it's this is our watchdog timer um, variable. And so it says here, um, basically when it's zero, we're actually resetting the flag so it, it uh, enables the watchdog timer again and once it once it goes to one that's when it runs our loop so we put the LED um, we put that on for a second we put it off and now as I was speaking before we actually put the pin LED as an input to save even more power and once we we run the function below and once we're actually done we set it back to an output so we can actually blink the LED. Let's go over here to the system sleep mode um, system sleep uh, function and we can actually see that we switch off the ADC like it said in the data sheet um, we can actually save more power by actually doing that so it uses CBI so as we can recall um, CBI turns it off. Just while we're here we'll actually get rid of this because doesn't recommend we do this in the data sheet so we can just get rid of all that and let's go back here so we're turning that off we're actually doing going to the sleep mode and we're enabling the sleep bit and we're just going to we're actually executing the sleep mode now and so it will sleep here and once we're done we disable the sleep um, enable bit and we turn on the ADC again and once that's done it brings us back here. So what we actually haven't covered is how it jumps out of this sleep mode. So once it's sleeping, how it actually jumps out. So that's right down here. This is the interrupt. So once this is um, executed, it sets the WDT um, to one and that's when it knows. So it jumps out of all this and it jumps out of here, it goes here and it's now number one. So it goes back to the loop and it actually executes this loop. Okay, so that's covered this example, so let's actually give it a try and upload it to the ATtiny85 and see what happens. 
So I've gone ahead and uploaded it to the AT Tiny 85 and we can straight away see the power savings. So before we were at 2.5 milliamps and now we've dropped down to 0 0.03 milliamps and so it's uh, just turning on the light for one second and uh, using the watchdog timer to sleep for the four seconds. Thanks for watching, hope you enjoyed it.